Okay, it is seven o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Your Career Path, which is part of our Get That Job a webinar series here at the Champaign Public Library. Uh, my name is Jordan Neal, and I am the career librarian here at the library. So thank you all for joining us. Um, so for the latest library news and updates, uh, please visit our website, champagne.org, or you can, um, of course, follow us on social media if that's an option for you. Um, we are pleased to announce that the library has reopened for grab and go service and computer use. Um, once again, please visit our website for more information, or you could, of course, give us a call. Um, you could email us at librarian at champagne.org, or you can uh, chat with us just by visiting the homepage of our website. Um, we are still offering our Book a Librarian service virtually. If you need any help at home um, to request a session, just visit champagne.org slash book a librarian to fill out a request form. Um, we are still offering our curbside uh, service if you would prefer to um, not come inside the library. And then finally, our e-library is always open where you can enjoy ebooks, movies, and more using your Champagne Public Library card, or you can sign up for a virtual library card um, through our website for instant access. Um, moving on to some Zoom features available to you that might help during this particular webinar. Um, depending on your computer or device, if you uh, take a look at your Zoom window, you could hopefully see audio settings at the bottom left of the screen and you can adjust your audio settings like um, changing your speaker by clicking or tapping on the upward arrow next to your speaker. Um, moving to the center bottom of your screen, you will see a chat and raised hand option. Um, clicking on the chat will open or close a chat box on the right side of your Zoom window, or sometimes it displays in the middle of your screen. Um, again, just depending on your device and you can drag it around. Um, you also have the option to raise hand um, to receive assistance. Um, you can use this if you have any technical difficulties or um, you'd like to speak and ask a question if you prefer not to type in the chat. Um, we invite you to use chat um, or raise the raise hand option to ask any questions or, or leave any comments. I believe our presenter might have some questions for us tonight. Um, and I think, I'm not sure, um, he'll tell us if he plans to answer questions throughout the presentation or at the end of the webinar. Um, I would like to also remind you that all webinars are recorded, so just please be mindful when you share those questions and comments. And then finally, I would like to introduce our presenter, um, Kevin Martledge. I invite you to read his entire bio on our website, but as president of Next Year Advisors, Kevin offers a variety of services, including enhancing teamwork, uh, professional development, and performance through conversations and solutions. Um, I'm so glad he could join us today. So with that, Kevin, I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. And uh, it's great to meet everybody on the call. It looks like we have about five people, uh, which is great. So let me um, pull up my slideshow here. And um, as she said, I, I'm with a company called Next Tier Advisors, and I kind of specialize in, in helping individuals kind of reach their full potential, whether that be, you know, creating their career path um, or helping them kind of develop um, their current career into, you know, the next steps and helping them identify those things. So. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all tonight, and um, as she said, I'd, I'd really appreciate as we're going through here, um, if you have some questions or anything like that, please, you know, raise your hand and we'll, um, um, we'll stop and kind of ask for them. And um, Jordan, if, if you don't mind, I'm, I don't see the chat feature or anything on my end, so, uh, oh, there it is, um, so I can at least see um, if people are chatting and I'll try to answer those as they're coming up, so. Um, so, so great. So I think before uh, we get started, let's, uh, we're going to start just to kind of get an understanding of uh, who's kind of on the call here. Uh, we have a poll that we're going to do. Let me if I get my computer to work here. There we go. So I'd like to just kind of understand from everybody kind of where are you in your current career journey? Um, and I have some, some examples there of questions that will be pulled up on the poll. Um, so are you looking for your first job? Are you looking for that next job? Um, do you happen to have a job? However, you don't find it very interesting or engaging. You're just kind of there, you know, going through the motions. Um, or I like my job and find it very engaging and interesting and there are opportunities for me to advance, but I'm not sure what is next for me. Or do you maybe fall into that other category? Um, so uh, I'll let you guys kind of go in and, and answer um, those questions. Um, 
and then we'll kind of talk about those results here in just a second. So to kind of give me an idea of kind of where everybody's at in that career journey. So. Uh, I'm seeing the questions. I'm not seeing any answers for them. I don't know if maybe we don't have any responses yet. Um, it looks like everyone has answered, so I'll go ahead and end it here. Okay, perfect. And if you don't mind, I can share the results. Yeah, that'd be great. Do I need to stop sharing or? Okay. Um, Oh, great. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that on your screen, but, you know, 20% of you say I'm looking for that first job. A um, couple of you say I'm looking for that next job. And majority falls into the category that I have a job, however, I don't find it interesting or engaging. So so basically, um, I appreciate you answering that. And uh, it gives me kind of an idea of where everybody's at in their, their career journey. And um, all of those things will kind of touch on um, as we go through here and start to kind of intentionally, you know, design your career path and kind of what's next for you. So let's go to the next question here. Um, what questions about your career are you trying to answer by being here tonight? You know, obviously there was something intriguing about the title um, to get you here and I appreciate you showing up, but you know, um, what are you trying to, to answer? Are there jobs out there that I might like better than the one I have now? What other kinds of work can I do now that maybe I've lost my job? It doesn't sound like anybody falls in that category on this, on this call. How can I make my current job more interesting? Where do I start my career search? Um, how can I get paid to do the things I do for fun? And what can I do after I retire? So some of those don't uh, necessarily, uh, you know, you don't fall into those categories um, based on your last responses. But if you can go ahead and answer those, um, we'll kind of get into the, the rest of the presentation then. <clears throat> It looks like everyone has voted, so I'll share those results. So are there jobs out there I might like better than the one I have now? And where do I start my career search and how can I get paid to do things I do for fun? Fun. So those are great categories. And I think as we go through this tonight, um, the, the kind of process I'm going to take you through and the things I'm going to have you start thinking about um, at a very high level will definitely um, help point you in the right direction to, to kind of get um, answers um, to some those three questions. So thank you so much for uh, going over that. It gives me an idea of kind of the, the audience and, and what you guys are here to try to achieve. And I think that we'll, we'll definitely achieve that as we're going through um, today. So um, let me go to the next slide here. So what's it mean to kind of become intentional? And I love this quote by Peter Drucker. Um, and if those of you that don't know who Peter Drucker is, I encourage you to look him up. He's a great um, kind of inspirational speaker and, and somebody that, that really just has an interesting outlook on life and, and different things. And he says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And, you know, if you're like me, as I went through my career, I've been doing, you know, various forms of, of my career for the last 25 to 30 years. And a lot of it just happened by chance. It's like, man, I gotta get that job. And I get in there and, and you're trying to, you, you like it and you're trying to advance yourself through that, through that job. And you never really take the time to sit back and, and intentionally look at, you know, what if I would have, you know, intentionally chosen that career and intentionally made that step and then helpfully, you know, design my career path um, throughout that 25 years, where would I be at today? Um, and what could I have done differently in my career? And so, my goal through all this is to help individuals like yourself become intentional about their career and really, you know, try to understand so you're not like me 25 years later and I'm finally doing what I've always wanted to do in my entire life. Um, I'm doing it now. Um, I want you to try to, to help you continue on that path and be very intentional. So obviously, if you look at the dictionary, intentional means it's done by intention or design. It's done in a deliberate way and it's not accidental. And I think if I were to ask that question, you know, is your career 
um, have, have the steps in your career been accidental or intentional to this point? Um, you know, nothing happens by accident, but could there have been some things that you could have done in a more deliberate way to help advance that career or find that job um, to help you, um, you know, enjoy what you're doing and always staying engaging and in, in, in those kind of things. So the unique purpose that we have for our company, which I think is important to help set the, the context is, you know, to enhance performance, teamwork and career careers through intentional conversations and solutions. And so my goal with you today is to help you have a different awareness of your personal interests and styles and how those can be helpful in identifying rewarding career opportunities, work activities, and leadership enhancement that could lead to a more engaging and intentional career. So instead of kind of looking outward, I wanna look inward here at the beginning and take you through a little bit of a process um, to help you kind of identify maybe some, some interest areas that you might have. And then we'll start to talk about what careers and what occupations and things you could kind of you know, pursue to do that. And I've got a whole process and some things we can send out to you afterwards to help with that. So, so goals for today, um, we're going to be looking inward a little bit, and I'm going to help you to start identifying who you are as an individual in terms of your career. You know, what, what is it that makes you you, and what is it that makes you unique, and how can you translate that into an intentional career? What are the things you value um, personally and in this part of your career? What do you like to do? What environments allow you to be the most productive? And what are some of your best skills? Um, and so we're going to go through a process to help you identify that and to get some of those things documented on paper so then you can, you know, make some action plans as we go from that um, to continue to help you to, to develop that. Um, so like I said, we're going to develop an action plan by the time we're done. And then I'm also going to point you in the direction of some tools that are out there um, that you can use as resources in your career journey. So, um, and all this is meant to help you understand you before you can truly become intentional about your career. So before we get started, do we have any questions um, about that, that process and kind of our approach today? Um, so it all kind of makes sense, You're just ready to kind of jump into it. So I don't see the chat feature, there it is. So, all right, so I don't see any chats coming up. So we're gonna talk about self-awareness. It's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. And so you may have as a person, you know, understand kind of what my values are and all those kind of things, but what are you truly seeing when you look inside and what makes you tick as an individual and what makes you, you know, things, what are those things that you're interested in? And so <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to start to take you through, we don't have time. I usually do this over about a two or three hour session with individuals as I do career coaching, but I'm going to start to to help you understand what Holland codes are. And Holland codes are used um, they're, they're used in a variety of different ways, but specifically in kind of career coaching. And for those of you that maybe you're interested or heard about Myers-Briggs and kind of the whole personality assessment typing and all that kind of stuff, the Holland Codes help you identify six interest categories based on typically you take an assessment online um, that we would sit down and go over those results. Um, but I'm going to go through a process with you today to kind of teach you what those six Holland Codes are. And as we're going through these descriptions, I'd like for you to take notes um, because as we get through all six of these descriptions, I'd like for you to, to share if you feel comfortable doing that or at least have in front of you the one, two, or three codes that, that resonate the most with you, okay? So as we go through this, it'll make more sense. So the first one is realistic, and we call these the doers. So people that fall into these categories they're, they're all about getting the job done, getting in there with their hands, getting dirty, you know, actually doing the work, uh, physical labor, those kind of things. Um, so people that have interest in those categories fall into this, um, this domain or this Holland Code. And that's usually represented by an R. So as we go through this, you know, the letter would be the first letter of each word. Investigative, we call the thinkers. So as people are going, you know, that fall into this category, they like to approach things very analytical. And so when they're faced with a problem, they sit there and methodically kind of go through it and say, okay, how can I solve this problem? Where's the data I need to look at? You know, and so they get very engaged and are very interested in occupations and things that allow them to, to use that skill and that, that ability to be very analytical about things. 
The next one is artistic. These are what we call the creators. And so as this says, you can probably imagine people that fall into this category, they're very creative. They, they really enjoy expressing their individuality, expressing their creativity um, in a variety of different, different areas, whether that be through the arts, through culinary um, things or, or you know, performance, that kind of stuff, even graphic design and those kind of things. So people that are very creative and like to express themselves um, uh, fall into that, that category. Social, which is what we call the helpers. So the social categories, it's all about helping others. So their main interest in life is to anything they can do to help other people. So you could you can see in these categories, you know, doctors, nurses, um, you know, teachers fall into this category. So anything that their career motivator is helping other people um, would fall into this this category. Enterprising, we call the persuaders. Um, and so these are the individuals that their whole career motivator is how can I lead other people and how can I persuade other people to, to achieve their goals or to achieve the goals of the organizations. And so you can see a lot of, you know, things that fall in, or jobs that fall into this category would be, you know, leadership type positions, director, vice president, management, um, anybody that can kind of be in control and, and be in charge of helping other people uh, pursue uh, their dreams. Um, and achieve the goals of the organizations would fall into that category. And then the last one would be conventional. And these are what we call the organizers. So people that fall into this category, they love to be organized. They love to work in environments that are very structured, um, that, that have you know, a very strict maybe process that you follow to achieve a goal or to solve problems and so forth. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of going into each one of these to really give you an idea of what, you know, each one of these means. And so as we're going through these next slides, this is where I'd like if you have time and you would like to participate, you know, by using the chat feature, you can um, say some things or you can even, you know, get on there and turn off your, your microphone and, and talk if you'd like to do that and feel comfortable doing that. So before we go on to that section, these are all on a hexagon like this for a reason, because the closer the two items are, the more in common they have. And so the farther apart they are, the less in common that they have. OK, so that'll make more sense as we're kind of going through that. So has anybody on the call gone through a process similar to this to, to help them identify the Holland codes and, and kind of what that's all about? Just out of curiosity, or is this kind of the first time maybe you're, you're seeing this? Anybody? No? All right. Got the chat up here. New to me, Lindsay, thank you for, for, for chiming in. So that's great. So I think as we're going through this, you guys, if this is especially if this is new to you, it's going to help you kind of give some context into, okay, what are, what are my innate interests and what categories might I fall into these things? <clears throat> so let's talk about the doers. And so we've had some pictures on here. Um, so things realistic people are interested in in this category, you can see on here are very, you know, mechanical construction, the trades, you know, anything you can use your, your hands uh, to get in there and get the job done, to physically be working in those environments and being outside, especially they like to be in those kind of environments and, and working with other people and, and, you know, kind of working together as a common goal. Um, um, to achieve that, um, to achieve the, the goals of that organization or what they're wanting to do. So what, if you guys want to chime in on the chat or you can even you know, speak up if you want, um, what are some maybe jobs that might fall into this category that people that uh, you know, are in the realistic or the doer categories, uh, what jobs might they have? Any thoughts? Some obvious ones on there, construction, definitely. Thank you, Jeff. Or Jeffrey. <clears throat> Constructions, any of the trades we talked about. What kind of environments might they like to work in besides the ones that are here? Um, what are some maybe, you know, environments that they would find intriguing or interesting or very engaging to work in? Welding, plumbing, electrician. Perfect. Thank you, Kay. <clears throat> Great. So We'll go on to the next slide. So be thinking about that as we're going through these um, about 
things that people fall in these categories, what are they interested in and what environments might they work in? And so in this category, realistic people are generally interested in mechanical construction and repair activities. They're interested in nature and the outdoors, providing public safety and physical activities and working with tools, machines, and equipment. And so the career motivator for these individuals are using physical skill. So that's what really gets them up in the morning. That's what keeps them going back to work every day is being able to be physical in their job, being out in the nature, providing public safety, physical activities in, in order to, to achieve their career goals. So does that makes sense to everybody, kind of how we're gonna go through these six categories. Yeah. Does anybody see themselves kind of fall into this category first? Makes sense. Maybe not. All right. So we'll go on to the next one. And so remember, as we're going through this, be taking some mental notes because at the end, we're going to say, okay, what are your one, two, or three kind of categories that, that resonates the most with you? <clears throat> so the next one would be the, the thinkers. Um, and so the people that fall into this category are definitely, you know, their interests are the investigative, you know, anything I can do to kind of research a problem, to, to use that kind of skills and my ability to be very analytical uh, is very important to these people and that's what keeps them engaged. And so you can see some of the jobs of the environments are like, you know, lab, lab type work where they're doing some experimentation or developing, you know, today's day and age, new vaccines and things like that. Um, or even you can see the CSI, you know, crime scene investigator, people doing forensic sciences, those kind of things. Anything that they can do to be very, you know, engaged and analytical and solving problems and, and how they pursue their, their careers would fall, would people would fall into these categories. <clears throat> and so these people are generally interested in activities related to science and math. They like gathering information, uncovering new facts or theories, analyzing and interpreting data. They're very scientific and inquiring and enjoy abstract and very ambiguous problems. The bigger, the more ambiguous the problem they're trying to solve, the more engaged they are because they really enjoy uh, being able to use that analytical skills to do those things. And so their career motivator would be analyzing. Anything they can do to analyze the situation is what's gonna keep them, them motivated. Um, when I pull up that chat screen, is that in front of the, I don't think that's in front of the, the the screen is it no no it's not no okay good <clears throat> so the next one would be the creators the artistic um, area and so as we talked about people that are interested in this or they, they love to be able to express their creativity um, they love to be in those environments where they're very outgoing and can be interacting with people um, and so some of the careers that you might see here is you know architect or design type work in the upper right hand corner Definitely art, artists, culinary services, so like a chef or, you know, somebody that works in the kitchen, um, those kind of things. Definitely the arts, as you see down below, um, you know, maybe being on Broadway or being in those, you know, that entertainment type field where they can express their creativity um, or the people that fall into this category. And they're generally interested in visual arts, performing arts, culinary arts, and writing. They like observing the arts and participating in them and they express their artistic interests through leisure and work activities. And so out of all the categories, this one is very interesting because people that fall in this category, they do both as their job or their work or their occupation. It, they do a lot of that stuff in their personal time too. They love the arts, so they maybe do that, you know, to have fun and to relax. They may do, you know, painting or whatever, but they, there tend to be a lot of things that they also do as part of their career. Um, so there's a lot of crossover between leisure and work activities in this category. And so we say their career motivator is expressing that creativity and finding the, those jobs that allow them to do that. <clears throat> um, the helpers we talked about a little bit um, are people that their, their motivation is to help other people. So you see the doctors, the military, um, you know, teachers, um, even volunteerism falls into here a lot. Um, anything that they can do to be out there helping other people and, and, and driving other people's success through their assistance um, or helping them, you know, overcome something or whatever um, is important to them. And so they're very interested in being with other people. They enjoy working in groups, sharing responsibilities, communicating with others, and they like to solve problems through discussions of feelings and interactions with others. 
So people that fall in this category, they like to help other people, but they also like to be very involved with other people. And so unlike investigative, where that may be somebody trying to solve something on their own and be very analytical, um, this person would like to be interacting with people and talk through solutions and working on a team and developing um, those outcomes by working as a group or on a team um, because they're very energized by that, that, that activity and so forth and, and solving those problems as a group. And so their career motivator would be helping others. <clears throat> and we'll go through the last two and then we'll kind of get your feedback as to what categories maybe you fall into as, as we go through the next steps. So the persuaders, um, as you can see, they're very interested in not only, as you can see, it's close to that, that social aspect because they like to help other people, but it's more in a leadership type of way. So they go in there and what can I do to support you and the organization to achieve uh, a goal um, or achieve the mission that we're trying to do? And so they're very interested in that. So that interaction with other people, but more in a leadership type fashion. And the environments they like to work in is obviously, you know, like a, a corporate or an office type setting where they can still have that interaction. Um, but they like to to have that that group. And it's tough with the pandemic, of course, right now. But, you know, having that interaction with other people and, and helping that that team achieve those goals are, are their their key motivators. And so these people are generally interested in persuading, leading others. They seek positions of leadership, power, and status, and not in a bad way, but they just, they enjoy being in charge and leading that group. And they enjoy working with other people and leading them towards organizational goals and economic success. And so their career motivator is persuading and influencing others. <clears throat> and the last one, um, I'm not this organized. This slide always uh, kind of makes me a little jittery because it's so organized. Um, but conventional people in this category are very interested in order and process and following the rules in terms of how you go about approaching your day and approaching your job. Um, and so these environments are definitely like the office type environments. So you may find, you know, people like, um, you know, office executives, people that are uh, business office managers um, that can be in charge of a, uh, a building or um, an office setting um, that allows them to have everything in line to support those other people um, to try to achieve, you know, those goals and have those things in place. So they're generally interested in activities that require attention to organization data, systems, detail, and accuracy. They work well in large organizations and they use information to officially organize and solve problems. And so their career motivator is organizing. Whatever problem comes at them, they're going to make sure they're approaching it in a very organized and systematic manner. They're going to be taking in data to help them make those decisions. Um, and they're going to be very detailed and accurate as far as um, those things go. <clears throat> so before we kind of move on, that's a brief overview of the Holland Codes. And, you know, I, I, I think it's important as you talk about becoming intentional with your career path is to really understand those. And without going through the whole, you know, Myers-Briggs strong interest assessment online and sitting down with me and going over it, it gives you a good kind of context of things to kind of to, to think about um, as you're going going through this. So if I was to ask um, with that very quick um, kind of discussion and overview of that, if you had to pick one or two of those categories that resonated with you the most, which ones would they be? Anybody care to share? Artistic and conventional. Thank you, Kay. Uh, oh, I missed one there. Hold on just a second. Lindsay, artistic and social. Good. Uh, Stefani, is that how you say? Conventional investigative, investigative and conventional. Kate, thank you for answering. Investigative and social with maybe a bit of artistic as a third. Great. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, perfect. So, so talk to me a little bit if you guys want to, if anybody feels like, you know, kind of chiming in and maybe coming off mute and talking about it, you know, what really resonated with you in terms of, you know, why you, you would choose that category? What are some interests and things that you have in your personal life um, or your current career that kind of fall into that category? Or is it 
something completely different. There's nothing that you're really doing right now in terms of your career that would fall in that category. Anybody care to share kind of their thoughts on that? And if you're interested in, in speaking, I could uh, just uh, raise your hand and I could let you speak. Yep. Anybody? Okay. We have one. So Jeffrey, okay. I'm gonna allow you to talk. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Nice to meet you. Hello. Yeah. Um, I really like the part about investigative. I feel like I'm a very analytical person, so mm -hmm. I like being able to um, spend my time thinking about things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. I like social. I was kind of thinking the routes of like, you know, I like explaining things to people. So I think that is something that kind of combines those two areas. Sure. Um, and yeah, this is okay. kind of why they appeal to me. I like helping people. Awesome. You like helping people. So in your current job or your, your most recent job, if you're, if you're in that process of kind of looking for the next one, uh, be able to do some of those things in your career to this point, or is that kind of maybe an aha moment? Hey, you know what? Maybe I need to start looking at some of those things where I can do those things. Yeah. Able to... Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I have been able to do those things, but they were kind of just minimum wage jobs, even though they were very fun. Sure. So yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, working at a board game store so definitely got to yeah you know help people find things they liked and explain sure. things which was great but yeah. not really a career which is what i'm looking for now yeah absolutely so the next step that we're going to go into this is going to help you kind of use some of those things that you you've identified in those categories and, and be very specific about okay what are some jobs i can maybe pursue or kind of look into so we'll get into that here in just a second uh, so thank you for sharing that i appreciate it um, Lindsay says, I'm a freelance writing currently and used to teach. I love both, but find it hard to find a job that allows me to do both. Really hard to find full-time work. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, that, Lindsay. So, you know, so yours were artistic and social. So being able to express that creativity and also doing that in a way that can maybe help people um, and so forth is, is something that I would say is, you know, obviously your career motivator and things that you like to do. Um, and so I agree, especially in today's market, you know, it is very difficult to find jobs um, in certain areas. And, you know, as we're going through this process, I, I hope to be able to provide you some tools and some things um, to help kind of be very specific about some areas that you can maybe look at um, that maybe you already have, or maybe look at them a little bit differently to help kind of, you know, maybe identify, you know, some of those potential job opportunities. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. So. Anybody else? All right. So does everybody have, you kind of all, uh, you know, wrote down your one or two or even three that you were interested in. And so what we're going to do now is let's, let's talk about each one of those. And so as you're going through like the strong interest inventory, you know, uh, if we were to sit down and do all that, you're going to have your assessment. We're going to first, just like we did, through those, those six Holland codes and help you identify one or two of them. And then your report's going to support that and we'll be able to dive into that a little bit more. But you know that aside, it's very important that you keep those Holland codes in mind, but then let's drill it down to what we call the basic interest after that. So as you look at your investigative um, category, there's four main kind of basic interests categories that fall under that that kind of help identify that even more so you know some basic interest categories under investigate might be science research medical science or mathematics and as you're starting really high level and starting to intentionally design that career you say okay i i really resonates with me my interest are in that that investigative category let's drill that down a little more so out of these four what would I be more interested in working in? Is it science-based? Is it my ability to allow me to do research? Is it more the medical science field? Or you know, am I really about mathematics um, and really like that kind of thing? And so if you start to look at it from a high level and drill it down a little more, and you know, if I was to be meeting with you, we'd drill it down three more steps to get to some specific jobs, but we're gonna go through some of that here in just a second. But as you look at each of the six categories, you know, these are kind of the basic interest, the next level, so to speak, under those categories. And so for those of you that are in artistic, 
you know, you said yeah, that really resonates with you. You know, the visual arts and designs could be a category you could look into. Performing arts, obviously, writing and mass communication. So as a freelance writer, you know, obviously being a freelance writer is very tough sometimes, but you enjoy doing it. So is there those opportunities to look for careers that are in kind of the writing and mass communication, working for a newspaper, or a TV, you know, doing a writing for, you know, whatever, um, you know, here in town. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can start to look at and be very intentional about, okay, here's my, my interest categories that I kind of resonates with me at a high level. Let me drill that down a little bit more um, and see if there's some areas in here that resonates with me as well that I'd like to pursue and kind of look at a little more intentionally to see what kind of jobs may fall into that. So what, what are some comments here? Is there anything on here that, um, you know, for those of you as you're looking at your categories that you're like, you know what, that makes sense to me in the artistic thing that visual arts and design, that may be something I hadn't thought about, or that could be something that I could look look into a little bit further and then do some investigating. So anything on here that kind of jumps out at anybody you'd like to share or kind of talk about thoughts on? And there's obviously a hundred other things that could be under here, but these are some of the big categories of kind of those basic interests that you could look into next for those. No, no hands raised or anything. So, <laughs> all right, well, we can move on. So, um, but I just encourage you as we're as we're moving on, you know, to kind of think about maybe jot down some of those. Hopefully you are of some of those categories that you can maybe look into a little bit further um, to help kind of, you know, build out and explore some of those interests and what some potential careers and next steps might be in those careers. So, <clears throat> so let's move on. So um, so we talked about, you know, kind of the need to understand you before becoming truly intentional about your career. And that first step is to really identify, you know, what those personal interests are and be able to articulate those things and talk about those and, and almost create almost a checklist, which we'll talk about here in a second. So as you're looking for jobs and looking into opportunities and having those interviews, you can be very intentional about, hey, this job sounds great and it ticks, you know, four of the boxes that are important to me. And so that that absolutely is something I'm going to pursue and look into a little bit further and get really serious about. And as you guys probably all know, trying to find that next job or that advancement in your job, that's a full time job in itself. Um, <laughs> it can take a lot of time looking for that new job. And, and so hopefully this part we're getting into here next is going to help you in a lot of different areas, which we'll talk about um, as you identify that. So the four career W's that I like to talk about is um, the who, the why, the what, and the where. And so as you sit down and kind of think about your interests, you think about some of those basic interest uh, categories underneath that, the Holland Codes, kind of what you like to do, what you're all about, um, what makes you tick, what gets you motivated in the morning. You know, I encourage you to write it down and to make a list. And, and I call these almost personal impact statements, and you can use these for a variety of different things, which I'll get to here in just a second. But write a statement about yourself. How would you describe yourself in terms of who you are as an individual and, and who you are in terms of your career? What is important to you, right? How would you describe yourself? What are some of those traits that you can talk about? And then after you do that, I would almost I would go down to what I value. So what is it that you value in a job? Is it, I just want that job that, um, you know, allows me to get paid for having fun and doing the things that I, I like to do anyway. I really value that. I really value something that gives me a lot of work-life balance. I value that job that get, makes me as most money as I possibly can. That's okay too, um, you know. Um, so really write down some of those key words that describe what you value uh, as a person is. Um, whether it be what you value in terms of your job or what you value personally. And I seem to, I tend to find that if you can really get into what you value personally and then try to, you know, interpret that into some careers that may allow you to do that, which we're going to talk about here in a second, that's what's going to be the most impactful for you, right? 
And then I'd have you write down some thoughts on, I would enjoy spending my work time doing what? What do I like to do? And put that into a few sentences that you it kind of describes um, what you really enjoy doing. Whether it's a, a job that's out there that you're, you're interviewing for or looking at or not, what do you enjoy doing as a person? What, what really keeps you motivated? What keeps you engaged in whatever it is you're doing, your personal life, your current job, whatever? Because um, I think all of you that have jobs or have had jobs or looking for that job or that next job, there's always things that, that really kept you engaged. You may not like the job itself, but there was parts of that job I could almost guarantee that you probably enjoyed. And you're like, man, if I could just do this all day long, I'd be, I'd be great. <laughs> and so I really want you to kind of spend some time and document that and write that stuff down so you can keep track of it. And then the last one would be, I would like to work in what environment allows you to be the most productive? Um, is that an environment where you can be kind of, um, you know, free to do your own thing? You have the expectations are outlined for you, but it's up to you to make those things happen and to stay within those guardrails. And you like to be left alone, just let me do my job. Or do you like more of that structure type environment where, you know, you're having that constant interaction with your supervisor, your manager, or you're very in touch with maybe the customer base or your members that you're looking, you're working for, or whatever it is in that organization. So really spend some time to think about what environment um, allows you to be the most productive. And I would encourage you to, you know, use it. I have a form I'm gonna have uh, Jordan send to you when we're done um, that allow you to document all this stuff. But I would have you start just making lists in all these categories and starting to formulate one or two sentences about you. And what that's going to do, it's going to keep it forefront in your mind. It's going to be very intentional. As you're doing this self-discovery, it's going to help you document those things to kind of keep those in the forefront as you're starting to look for jobs or that next position within your company. Um, and it's going to help you kind of always remember and kind of be intentional about where you're going because these are the things that are important to you. And then the last thing I'd have you do is, you know, write down your skills. What are you good at? What, whether somebody's told you you're good at it or not, you feel just really great at it. And you don't have to be the, you know, LeBron James or Michael Jordan or whoever of, of that thing, the best there ever was. But what do you really feel good at, about doing and comfortable doing? Um, and jot those things down. Um, public speaking, I'm great at that. Or, you know, helping others. I really love doing that. And, you know, specifically, it's when I can help people you know, maybe do freelance writing and I can take their thoughts and then produce a story about it. You know, I feel really good about being able to do those things. And so write those things down and jot them down and you can use the form I'm going to send you at the end if you want to, but, you know, really keep those in the forefront. And then what I want you to do with that after you've, you've spent some time doing that is look at how you're describing yourself and start to make a list of some jobs that might allow you to be who you are. Where are some jobs out there? If you know, I could have any job in the world, what are those jobs that would allow me to be who I am and use those interests and have those things involved um, to allow me to do that? And then you're gonna talk about, okay, well, what jobs might have the same shared values as me? Um, what, what kind of occupations or jobs would allow me to you know, really express my values and hold the values that are important to me true? And compare those two lists and start to cross off the ones um, that are different and maybe circle the ones that are the same, because those are the jobs intentionally, if you could go pursue and investigate and learn a little bit more about, those are the jobs as you're intentionally designing this career path that I would suggest, hey, let's look into the see there's some possibilities there of some things that we could do. Same thing, what jobs might provide me the opportunity to do what I love doing? Um, so if it's freelance writing, where can I go do some writing and get consistently paid for those things? Or whatever it is that's important um, for you. I'm sorry, I keep using freelance writing, but that's a, that's, that's a great example of how can you, you love doing it, but how can you turn that into a, a steady career and that next occupation and a job that's gonna allow you to continue to do that on a full-time basis? Same thing, what jobs provide the best environment for me? You know, so as you're looking at jobs, if you love being around people, but you know, there's a job out there that you're applying for that you're gonna be sitting behind a desk all day, just doing your own thing by yourself, you're not gonna be happy with that 
And chances are it may give you a paycheck, but you're gonna be maybe miserable doing those things, right? And so if we could be intentional about those jobs that will allow us to be in that environment, that's the goal for all these things. And let's, let's, let's identify what those are and what's that look like. And certainly what jobs allow me to use my skill, right? And, and certainly uh, good onboarding and good hiring practices are we're going to you know, hire you for your attitude, hire you for what you can bring to the table and hire you for those skills. But there's a lot of those skills we understand as employers, we're gonna have to probably teach you and train you on. But what are those basic skills that I have and what jobs would incorporate some of those things? And so spend some time, you know, really asking yourself these questions and documenting them down and, and coming up with, you know, kind of your next steps and what you're going to be doing. And then for those of you that are in your career and kind of wondering, what's the next step in my career? You can go through the same process, but you ask yourself a little bit, you know, different. How have I grown professionally and personally? Um, how have my professional and personal values changed our values remain the same or have they changed? What about my job do I still enjoy and what would I change? Does my current environment still support me in a produ being productive and what newly developed skills do I have and can I use those skills in a new position? And so you're saying you're going through the same process but you're kind of once a year or whatever you're, you're kind of checking yourself to see if there's some things that have changed and okay how can I you know if this has changed how can I be intentional and let's go pursue those things um, and, and get a plan in place so I can uh, achieve those things. Okay. Some of the best advice I ever got from somebody way late in my career was, you know, um, somebody had been with an organization for 40 years before they retired. He goes, I said, you know, that's a, that's a pretty impressive career. I said, do you have any regrets at all? You know, because you've been so successful and, you know, there had to have been some ups and downs. Talk to me about that. And he goes, the one thing I wish I would have done is once a year, I would have sat down and asked myself, am I still happy doing what I'm doing? And if not, how can I change that? Um, and he goes, if I would ask myself that, you know, once a year, it could have really been reflective. And I could have said, yep, I'm still happy what I'm doing. I'm moving on. But I didn't. And so I found myself at times in my career where I'm just like, boy, I'm just not happy. But, you know, I've been here for 20 years. I need to just keep going. And so I encourage you to really sit down and be very reflective. And I know, you know, finding that next job is, is a big task and a big undertaking. Um, but if you could be intentional and kind of put some context around some of these things, I think it's going to help you identify some of those jobs that you can go and pursue and research and, and apply for and, and, and hopefully obtain. It's going to help you to be very engaged um, personally as you go through that career. Does that make sense to everybody? Is there any questions before we kind of wrap up and go through some of these resources and things? <clears throat> Is that helpful at all? No, no comments. Would you say that management style falls under environment? So uh, I'm assuming that means management style of, you know, the manager you may work for. Um, yes, okay. So, so sure, absolutely. You know, I think that's where if you can really articulate and document the type of environment that helps you to be most productive, as you're getting into that interview stage, you know, I always approach interviews as just as much you're interviewing them as they are interviewing you. Is this a good fit for me personally, professionally, monetarily, financially, whatever it is, these, these categories you're looking at, you, you absolutely need to know that. And so those are some follow-up questions. It's always tough when you're in an interview. They're like, do you have any questions for us? They're like, oh boy, what am I going to ask? Perfect time to ask some of those questions about, you know, tell me about your management style. Tell me about the interaction we're going to have on a daily basis. Tell me about what kind of communication you like between myself and you and you and me, and how are we going to stay on the same page as we're all trying to make this organization better? And so I, I think absolutely, if you can really have a good understanding about what makes you productive, management style definitely falls under that. And I think that's very important to look like look at as you're intentionally, you know, trying to design your career path. Absolutely. Great question. Thank you. <clears throat> So let's get into some resources and tools. I'm going to leave a few minutes for questions. I can certainly stay on if we need to. But um, so some of the resources is, you know, obviously, you know, I, I showed you a little bit about the the career awareness program that we offer using the strong um, you know, taking you through that process. And sometimes it's helpful to have somebody to talk through some of these things with you. Um, and, and certainly that's a resource that, that I'd be happy to provide you. And I have a little 
uh, thing here at the end that we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but, you know, I'm definitely here as a resource to help you dive into some of these personal interests to help you develop in, in this intentional career path. So that's certainly a thing there. And I have my website here at the end that I can share with you. Um, and the strong interest inventory, you know, it's based on John Holland's theory of vocational psychology and those, those Holland codes and stuff like that. And so part of that process is, is as you're taking that assessment, you're getting an interpretive report back that's personalized for you that, that I sit down and kind of go over with you. And we talk about the general occupational themes, which are the Holland codes, the basic interest scales, which we talked about today. But then we also dive into occupational skills, personal style, and then a summary um, and some, some exercises for you to understand those. So we drill all the way down to, here's your interest, here's your basic styles that you're, or skills that you're looking at, interest scales, and then here's some specific occupations and jobs. And also we dive into, you know, what your, those environments look like specifically for you. Do you like to take a lot of risks? Do you like to be more of a team player? Do you like to be more individual versus, you know, collaborative and those kind of things? Um, another resource, which I think is just fantastic, is the ONET. And so I don't know if anybody's ever been to ONET online, but it's developed by the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, and it's the nation's primary source of occupational information. So if you want to go find out anything about any job, you can pretty much, there's a good chance it's going to be on here. And you can actually go in and um, search by the job title, if you know it, and it'll give you things like what's a typical day look like um, for that person? What are the skills? What are the education requirements? What are some of the hiring things that people would like you know, to see that are hiring that? It even gives you, um, you know, some estimated annual salary information and hourly wage information in some cases. Um, and the coolest thing is, is that you can use those Holland codes that I shared with you today, and you can search for jobs based on those Holland codes. And so I don't know, I can try, I don't, we're kind of running out of time, but if you, if you go to one, um, one or ONET online, and in the middle of the page, it actually, it shows you, you can search by interest. And that's where you would input that, that Holland code. And it'll give you hundreds of jobs that fall into that category, which means these jobs have things involved with them that relate to those interests and some of those career motivators that we just talked about. So it's a really cool tool. Um, and certainly if you go through the whole strong interest inventory process with me, it's all hyperlinked out to the ONET. So as it's saying things about occupations, you can just click on them and it goes out there. But I'd encourage you to check this website out. It is, it's got so much information on there. I could spend two hours talking to you about the things that are on there. Um, it's a great resource as you're trying to figure out what that next job is and be very intentional um, about what that is. And then I have a career act awareness worksheet, which I'm going to have Jordan's going to send to you when we're done. Um, that's going to help you document all the information we talked about today. And as you're starting to do that self reflection and, and coming up with um, your kind of next steps, so you're going to be able to write in your four career W's, you know, your top five skills that you identified, some of the occupations that you like to pursue or, or learn more about. Because um, I think a lot of it is is really just that brainstorming and let me decide, you know, find out what all's out there. Um, and then come up with some next steps about how you're going to pursue those things. And, and really hold yourself accountable. Like we said earlier, you know, finding that next job or, you know, advancing in your career is, is a full time job in itself. And so anything you can do to kind of document those steps and be intentional about this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to research this. I'm going to go find somebody in my network that does that job and I'm going to talk to them. Um, I'm going to go back to school. Um, I'm going to, you know, talk to my manager about, hey, these are some career goals I have. Can you help me get there? And what can I do internally to do those things? So really, you know, come up with those next steps and, and talk about and hold yourself accountable. And then for attending today, um, Jordan's going to also send out this link. Um, I'm going to offer you guys a free like 30 minute career coaching call if you're interested. There's no obligation. I just want to get to know you a little bit. If you have questions, you can click on the link she's going to send you. It'll, it'll schedule, it'll show you available times, just schedule it all. We'll get on a Zoom call or I can just call you on the phone or you can call me, whatever it looks like. 
and let's just talk about your career. Talk about, you know, what you're thinking about, talking about any questions you had about the presentation, anything I can do to help you, you know, kind of reach that next goal um, or that next step in your career. I'm, I'm happy to do that. And, and it would be, you know, honored to be kind of a resource for you as you're kind of navigating through this. Um, so by all means, feel free to use that link. And, and I'd love to kind of touch base with you if you're interested to just to have a conversation of anything else. So. So I'm done talking. Uh, what questions do you guys have or any comments or anything I can answer for you in the, in the minutes we have left on the call? Anybody there? Let's see. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start. Yep, oh, I can if, stop um, sharing too. Oh, yeah. we might have a question that came in. Sure. No questions, but thanks so much for a great webinar. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for attending. Great. great. Yes, thank you for attending. Well, first off, thank you, Kevin. That was that was great. Yes, you're getting you're getting some praise here. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. And again, feel free to type in any um, questions you have, or if you want to speak, we can um, let you. Uh, we can unmute you. Um, so here's my information in case you have any. Um, further questions, or I'm again happy to connect you with Kevin, although I'll be sure to send out um, the, the link that he provided right after the webinar. Um, mm -hmm. And here at the library, we're also helping out with career um, related, you know, um, questions or requests, um, you know, we could send you a zoom link or we can meet via platform that you're comfortable with. Um, you know, we don't have to jump into details right away, but we've been reviewing resumes and cover letters. We've been hosting a lot of practice interviews lately. Um, so uh, please reach out um, if you are interested in that. And then our next um, career webinar will be Networking 101. Um, that'll be Tuesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. Um, and that'll be presented by Wes um, Irwin, who is a faculty member at Indiana University's Kelly School of Business. Um, and he'll just discuss you know, the concept of networking and we'll learn tips and strategies to identify and grow your network, um, especially when it comes to practicing and talking about your skills and your experiences um, when those um, opportunities arise for you. Uh, and we hope you'll consider attending more webinars. I have the career ones listed here for the rest of February, but we have a lot more coming up um, well into the spring. We have more webinars related to our um, business series, our technology series, our crafty adults, our writers workshops. So please visit champagne.org slash events for more information or if you would like to sign up. And yeah, once again, um, I have our contact information here. You can email us at librarian at champagne.org if you have any questions. Um, you could chat with us again by just by visiting the homepage of our website. Um, and again, I, I'm pleased to announce that we have reopened for um, grab and go yeah. service. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but if, uh, if you're not quite comfortable coming into the library, we're still offering curbside services as well. And does anybody have any further questions? For Kevin, again, that was great. We are gonna have Kevin back uh, next month. I'm very excited to say that. So, yeah, stay tuned. Looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any further questions, so I will wish everyone a good night. Yes. More thank yous, Kevin. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Please reach out if there's anything I can do to help you out. I'm happy to be a resource for you. Um, and if I don't All know right. the answer, I'll connect you to somebody that does. So. <laughs> Great. That, that's exactly what we do here at yeah. the library as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all very and... much. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Take care, everyone, and have a good night. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.